Speaking of improper nudity, the opening of Hunt the Dark Knight starts with transsexual Nazis with arseless chaps. <laughs> That's so, it's so weird. It's so 80s as well, isn't it? It's the sort of thing I look at and go, this could only be if from an 80s comic. Or 1930s. <laughs> or 1930s. Or actually saying that maybe a Rob Liefeld comic yeah, as true. well. But Okay, yeah. <laughs> so point. there's a few eras, but it's very, very 80s in tone. Yeah, and as we said, the, the Nazi is also a transsexual, which is an interesting thing. We, we spoke to Bo before coming on air, and he said this might be either a reference to Ernst Rom, who was a paedophile caught, shot, actually murdered by, by Hitler for being gay, with a young boy in his bed. Nazi sympathizers carrying Nazi fags, flags. Or uh, I suggested Hermann Goering, who might have been a transvestite and, and possibly had his testicles blown off by being shot in the groin <laughs> in his 20s. This is a recurring theme with Nazis, you find. It was a recurring theme with leftists, but yeah, there also, we yeah, have it. Especially in the modern age. Yeah. No, um, I... I, I <laughs> it's hard. To, is, it's hard to what, articulate, especially Batman's strange disguise as this like <laughs> Russian Baba Yaga creature. It's really, it's a really weird opening, and I think as iconic as this is, as much as it's a classic, I think it is a immediate sign of the slight downturn that the quality of the story yeah. takes. Because why is this transsexual? Nazi running around with bare breasts with swastika pasties and also assless chaps yeah. where each butt cheek has a swastika Yeah, nobody's well. really bringing Bruno back in modern continuity. I wonder why. Well, no, except for Frank Miller in All-Star Batman and Robin. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, can, okay, where can you I... get a much more nicely drawn Bruno by Jim Lee. Yeah, can I make a, can I make a really haram opinion actually do you really like it no i don't really like it it's a horrible comic it's one of my first actually i oh, got really? a random issue i was like five and i got the issue where he was shagging black canary on a dock and i was like this is weird uh, it's very strange yeah she's irish for some reason um i really like the joker design in that it's a bit edgy but i quite like it well with, that with explains the... why you like jared leto's joker then i think there are elements that can be salvaged but the damaged tattoo is inexcusable the, yeah okay at least we yeah. can agree there yeah but um all-star batman and robin yeah it's terrible but yeah, I... we're not covering that i don't know <laughs> I'm tempted though. I do kind it's of. It's a car crash. There's no political relevance, and he eats rats and cover. He beats Green Lantern with yellow paint. I we do, can't do it. I do really like Batman's complete doesn't give an f attitude through the entire. Are you retarded? Thing, I'm the goddamn Batman. That's so amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so then that's that's at least saved by the the splash page that follows it of Batman and Robin jumping into the sky, which is just a fantastic. Yeah, page. it's a like, good that's, page. That's great. And then we get onto the Joker plot where you see this emaciated, basically AIDS patient looking Joker um, revivify himself and try and run a media campaign to to say I'm cured, I'm Headed all right. Headed by Dr. Volpe exactly. again. Another example of Foucauldian prison abolition not working. He reminds me basically, unfortunately, of the real example of the London Bridge terrorist who went to his own conference as an example of how rehabilitation works for terrorists and then stabbed the two PhD students who were talking about him. Yeah. And he was defeated by random passerby on the street that grabbed a walrus tusk and a fire extinguisher. So Life imitates art, it seems, yeah. because Dr. Volpe ends up just another one of Joker's victims. And it's very, very hard to feel bad for him, seeing as he is one of the prime reasons that Joker is in the position where he can kill again. And Two-Face as well. And Two-Face claims plenty of bodies. Um, then we see the confrontation between Clark and Bruce in the amazing wilderness shot where Clark seems to be some kind of Ralph Waldo Emerson character depicting... Um, American nature. He looks a bit like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast as well. He, he does, and there's also just you know just a casual eagle yeah. flying past him. If you if you didn't feel American enough looking at that page, there's an eagle there as well. Yep. Uh, once again, another example of Frank Miller's complete misunderstanding of Superman as a character throughout that yep. entire scene, where uh, Su Superman's just going, "Listen, Bruce, we need you to. You're way too loud on these things. We need you to be quite as if." Being loud is a problem when you're trying to save Gotham, the most degenerate city yeah. in the entire world, I would imagine. Yeah, he has quite a lot of critiques of Reagan as well. This is where Reagan's visage mm. makes its first appearance. Uh, this was during the time, of course, where Reagan was facing credible accusations that he had a bit of dementia, much like the sitting, very legitimate current president. Uh, it seems that he's positioning Reagan as this kind of immortal totalitarian, which I don't really get the criticism of. I think it's a too paranoid... Uh, I think the criticism is massively ruined when in, I think it's the same issue or the issue before, 
No, it, it 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 is the same issue because it's when Commissioner Gordon is handing is speaking to Commissioner Lin Yindel, yeah. his replacement in the narrative. Because Commissioner Gordon, also very old, he's seventy years old yep. now. He's being forced into retirement when he would rather stick around yep. because he still feels he's got an obligation to the city. Uh, but Commissioner Gordon is handing over and talking to her, and she's like, "Well." Why is it that you've been able to stomach working with a vigilante for so long? Mm. How could you accept? How could you look yourself in the mirror when you've allowed rampant criminality yep. in the form of Batman? And he explains, you know, some things are bigger than you. But to do this, he uses the example of Franklin D. Roosevelt, to, yes, and the example of FDR potentially having known about Pearl Harbor being about to happen before it actually did and letting it happen and then dragging America. Let's be honest, all you need to do is look over the opinion polls that came out around the early 1940s into a war that it desperately wanted nothing to do with. And FDR himself was an avowed fascist who traded letters with Mussolini and said, I like the way you do things, and then slowed the Great Depression recovery with his terrible policies. No, no, he caused the Great Depression. Yeah, they Well, actually, no, actually, no. Herbert Hoover caused the Great Depression, he and then it. FDR just kept it going. They literally had to do a constitutional amendment to stop him becoming a dictator. He is... He if, also kept his uh, crippling disabilities hidden from the public for yeah. as long as possible. Yeah, with a secret underground railroad, which was very expensive to build. If Woodrow Wilson did not exist, he might be the worst president of the 20th century. He's a symptom of Woodrow Wilson. Yeah, he's a continuation of his legacy, much like Tony Blair was for Margaret Thatcher, unfortunately. Yes, so the, Frank Miller's criticism of Ronald Reagan seems to be very weak when, yeah. Ronald, uh, when he's praising FDR, while at the same time criticising Ronald Reagan for kind of being the same in terms of always oh, dragging us into all of these unnecessary global conflicts. So did FDR. The only contention you seem to have with Ronald Reagan is that his rhetoric isn't as good. Yeah, you can criticise him for Iran-Contra, for example, yeah. and, and Death in the Family, which we'll cover at some point, definitely does, but the man did also end the Cold War with his rhetoric, so he was on the ball at least for some of it. Uh, at least from this weird, awkward exchange, you do get the, the great bit of... Um, it's like this, Bruce. Sooner or later, somebody's going to order me to bring you in. Somebody with authority. When that happens, and then Bruce goes, when that happens, Clark, may the best man win. Which is... It's cool. Just it's, great. That's it's cool, but once again, I don't know, with Superman in this, I get Homelander syndrome, which... Yeah, which is obviously... And the same thing with Injustice, which I'm sure we'll cover at some point. This is... This is the starting point of the Superman could be a dictator at any moment belief. Whereas it's... And this is because Frank Miller fundamentally sees Superman as an alien. He, he, Frank Miller has Lex Luthor's opinion on Superman. He actually does, yeah. you're right. He is a Lex Lutherite on Superman, whereas Superman, the thing that, that constrains him is actually, whereas Bruce Wayne is the mask for Batman, Clark Kent is the authentic person for Superman, and Superman is, is uh, uh, it's not an alien trying to be human, it's a human being who barely believes he's an alien. You know, he's, he's authentically human, it just happens to have all these powers. Yes. I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't even necessarily say um, that's the problem. Oh my goodness, I've lost my train of thought for a moment. Bear, bear with me one. Oh, that's it. No, my problem with the idea of Homelander Syndrome as I see it is I'm sat there questioning why this person, who on a practical level has demigod powers, yeah. would ever feel threatened enough to take orders from anybody yeah. on this planet. Yes, he's constantly going, oh, they can do this, they can do that, they'll destroy us. I'm sorry, Soups. Yeah. You're far too powerful to feel threatened by any of these people. Yeah. You could you and, could turn Ron Reagan's head into a block of ice with a single breath if you fancied it, but Yeah, so I don't understand why you feel the need to be so afraid of these, especially when the setup for it, the world building, is that they created commission to try to prevent all of the uh all of the issues that superheroes were causing, at that point, I'm sorry, Soups, you've got the backing of all the other superheroes yeah. there as well. So now you may feel isolated and alone because he's like, oh, Diana went back to her people, Hal went off into space, everybody's abandoned. Yep. But at the time when this contextually was all happening within the universe, you still had the backing of every single one of them. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.